<clears throat> Alright, so, as you may have heard or found out that about Obama's farewell speech and how he's leaving office, but there's one thing that has I've always wanted to address, and I've noticed it repeated over and over in the media, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me, which is fair, but I would prefer that we get into, you know, I don't want to get butt heads over this, but but it has been an issue for me, and something that I, I just, I'm somebody who looks at things logically, certain things make logical sense. So, throughout his presidency, he's often referred as the first black president, okay, which is not factually true. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from black Americans, right? Uh, I don't care if he's a serial killer or he's a drug dealer. He's just sim it's simply not true. His mother was white, okay? The reason, right, of course, why the media, society, both conservatives and liberals, choose to identify him as the first black president, okay, one of the one main reasons, I would say, has to do with the remnants of historical racism, right, which is funny, you know, they're using a term, calling him black, which is... The reason behind that has, of course, to do with how society operated under the Jim Crow laws when blacks and whites were divided, you know? And if to implement that policy, you had to say, okay, well, if a white man has, if, if whites and blacks mix and they produce children, where are you going to put them? Well, of course, you had to decide whether or not you want to put them on the white side or the black side. So that's how people who were partially black got identified as black in the first place. And the law was so ridiculous. I mean, if you look at, for instance, the Plessy first Ferguson case, and look at, I think that's the plaintiff, I think it was Plessy, I, I want to say it's Plessy, um, the, the, the man looked, he didn't look black at all, okay? He didn't have, I don't think he had curly hair. He looked like a white guy, but because he was just a little black, he got identified as black, right? Just to show you how ridiculous it was. I recently was reading a bunch of books about the history of the United Nations and world history, and I came across a guy named Ralph Bunch. Okay, now he was also biracial, half black, half white, and he he was he, he was pivotal for helping negotiate. The, uh, the 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 Palestinian um, that is uh, the, the, the negotiations between Palestinians and Israelis. He was there at the infancy of the creation of United Nations, so he played a pivotal world, pivotal um, role in how the world government came to be the system that it is today. And he talks about how he, he laments right about the fact that he still had to live in segregated neighborhoods at the time. So, it, you know, it isn't, the racial categorization is, it, it is simply a, is defined by the, the, the history of the United States and other places throughout the world haven't defined race in the same way, right? Look at Brazil, there's a multiplicity of different racial categories, right? And it's funny, when we talk about race relations, you know, we have different racial categories, but it always comes down to blacks and whites. And it's funny, because only African Americans and European Americans, we decide to classify as blacks and whites. We don't say Chinese, the yellows, or the Indians, the reds, or whoever, the, whatever the case may be. So we have to understand that we have a very unique historical um, perspective on this that it, or upbringing background that has shaped our perspective on race relations. Now, I think the thing is that at the time when he was elected, one of the reasons why he kept being identified as black 
had a lot to do with the fact that it helped galvanize and mobilize black people to come out to vote. The polls, there's a little, it, it helped became part of the impetus to get them out to go and vote. Now, I'll grant you before that, Barack Obama, he was very big on himself, Barack, and he had these, he wanted to get in touch with his African roots, right? But the thing is, he was still raised by his white grandparents, his white mother. In fact, there was a interview where the guy was talked about biracial, but he kept calling him, you know, black. And then you hear, oh, you got this black kid by, raised by white parents. And it sounds like you have white parents who adopt a black kid and raise him when it's just a kid who happens to be part black, but also part white. And, you know, people get upset at this and they say, no, how dare you? That's how he should be identified. But then it's like, okay, to, to just put a twist on this, suppose he was part Chinese or part Indian or part Middle Eastern, whatever the case may be, um, pick, pick another race, and he was part black. Would, we, would it then be bad to say he's biracial? Or what if he's part Indian or part Chinese, right? I mean, you have a multiplicity of combinations you could come with. with. How would you come to decide how to identify that individual. I mean, it comes, becomes much and more complicated which group decides to define this person, right? So, so I just think that it's funny, too, that we talk about living in a post-racial society. However, we, in a way, don't want to achieve that post-racial society because we can't come to admit that a black man and a white woman came together to make the president of the United States. And some people are saying, and it's funny, some people say, oh, Obama's experience growing up is not like other black people, right? Well, yeah, because he was raised by his, the white side of his family. And he's raised by the white side of his family because he's part white, okay? That's why his experiences is different, right? So it goes completely beyond people like, oh, duh, yeah, right? And now the reason why, for me in particular, I've always been irritated by this in particular point is because about, I'd say 20 years ago, or I can't remember, when I was younger, about 12 years old, I distinctly remember having a conversation with my grandma. Now she was a Democrat, she was Catholic, you know, she's pretty open-minded, but we had a very, like I said, very distinct conversation. And essentially what she said is that blacks and whites shouldn't marry, okay? They shouldn't produce children. Why? Because, she said, if they produce children, society won't accept them, okay? So I think when we say, well, not just Obama, but biracial people in general, or half black, half white, if we say to them, well, you have to, we, well, the, these people are black. In a way, it's kind of saying, yeah, we're not going to accept the fact that um, biracial people exist in the first place. So, I don't know, it's getting a little deep here, but that's kind of how, how I, why I kept thinking about it for a long time. And I'm, and like I said, I'm somebody who tries to stick to the facts, okay? And, it, it, and the thing is, it's not like... And some people will say, oh, he looks black or whatever, and he has these black features. Yeah, that may be true if we didn't know about it. the fact he had a white mother. Okay, then you can make the point be like, okay, yeah, he, he could potentially be a light-skinned African-American. But the fact is, we know who his parents are. So it's not completely ambiguous. Uh, at any rate, I really want to get that off my chest. And I was looking for an opportunity to do it, and so I figured he's leaving, so that would be the perfect time to do it. All right, uh, I'm gonna make another video too, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. So, but I figured I haven't posted in a while, so I'll post this. All right.